Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here and this is going to be week number one of the ICBA up when we're up against uh, Champion Braden and his James River Joltions. Now this is going to be a really, really scary fight. So really quickly, once again, this is going to be a semi-Ubers format, which is not a format that I deal with particularly well, but it's kind of what we have here. And you can see in team preview, there are a lot of things that really kind of threw me off. No Surfets really threw me off. No Diggersby really threw me off. Those were two of the mons that I kind of prepped against the most. In particular, in kind of thinking about how I want to win with my Mew, because this is a dragon dancing Mew and it's really meant to kind of take on his team because I think it has a bonkers good matchup if it can get the dragon dance up if it can drain punch on a banded diggers bees quick attack then it can gain all its HP back I did all these calcs and I put a lot of thought into what these interactions would look like and ultimately it just didn't materialize but one of the other things that I'm thinking through is how I'm going to deal with a Scarfed Darmanitan. Obviously, once I have that Dragon Dance up, then Mew is dealing with it and getting HP back. There are a lot of in interactions that I thought of. I have Icicle Spear for the Togekiss. And Drain Punch, obviously, if I'm able to take, I believe, a Scarfed Dark Pulse from, from my Hydreigon, then I can hit it back with Drain Punch and start to get that HP back and start to make things happen here. I thought a lot about potential items on it to help it sweep better. I thought of Tango Berry for the Surface in particular, or the Vicka Vault if it came right down to it. I definitely thought about Culverberry to kind of deal with the Hydreigon or to set up in the face of a Hydreigon. But ultimately, like I said, at the end of the day, I am trying to win with my Mew and my Groudon is kind of meant to open up the doors for it and everything else is just meant to maneuver around trying to open up as many doors as it possibly can for the Mew and uh, in particular with the Groudon leading the charge. I want to just clear the path for the Mew and ultimately just make things happen here. And just to quickly mention, this does go to timer we did have to play on the 20 minute timer which was really really unfortunate but we just couldn't get the the land to work and because of that there, there was a lot of confusion around the end of game time thing so i was visibly confused and i just kind of wasn't talking through a lot of what my thought process was in the kind of the end half of this segment but spoiler alert again we did end up coming back to finish off the rest of the match we did do a little bit of a recreation and recreated the end game a little bit so that bit at the very end when we come back for the recreation that will be live because again th there was none none of that confusion that was going on when this battle first happened but for this i just felt like it would be cleaner to just redo this battle but with that we're just going to get right into my leads i really did think that my groudon was going to be the best kind of catch-all lead i felt like a it protected me against a potential webs lead because i did have overheat in sun uh for the vega vault and i felt like it could handle most vega vaults i would want to come out here i could precipice blades on most other mons that would be out here and if it baits out the hydreigon then i get to know what the, the hydreigon is and i can kind of play with it a little bit trying to figure it out how i'm going to manage it but that's going to be how i go into this opening and from him we do see leading off with gold now this really kind of uh, frightened me in team preview so one thing that i should have mentioned in team preview was that uh this crowd on is actually not fast enough to deal with a max speed gold duck assuming that it is max speed and it really has no reason not to be but because um for whatever reason i just had a little bit of a mental block oh and and the effects popping does confirm that it is faster than me but um i just had a little bit of a mental block where i had all these mods that i was trying to prepare for but for whatever reason like the gold duck seemed like a non-issue for me at the time but obviously gold duck is a fantastic bring against a against the semi sun team that it also just has a ground on on it let that that can just kind of tear through a lot of teams so i had to think on my feet and just trying to think of how i wanted to play this i ended up switching out immediately uh, to the blastoise this is a physically defensive blastoise but it was just gonna have to pull its weight as a as a backup gold duck cancer because as much because like i said just as good as the gold duck was against me for whatever reason i, I couldn't just imagine it coming so i just didn't uh, prepare as well for it, it i think I think the bigger thing for me was that I felt like Diggersby and or Surfetch were so much better for me uh, 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 against me, I should say. And I just, I felt like they were such like shoe ins to come that, I, that it just kind of crowded out the, the, the team space for the Golduck in my mind. But regardless, um, I believe I clicked flip turn reasonably quickly because I don't think this thing wants to stay in here. I mean, if it does, even if it does, um... I can kind of maneuver around this gold duck as best as I can. He does go out into the toe kiss, which um, is pretty solid for me. I really don't have the best answer to, to, to the toe kiss anyway. Uh, I think if anything, my best answer to the toga kiss is going to be my Groudon. And I believe I go into the Groudon here. Um, 
And funnily enough, uh, my, my Radon is also not my rocker, which uh, was kind of unfortunate for me in the moment. And here, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking through my options here. But uh, my rocker is my Scarf Pincer. I think I had a different set in the beginning and then I changed it to Scarf. But um, I had rocks on it anyway. In my mind, I felt like I could scare out some mons and kind of um, find an opportunity to get rocks up. But I think now would have been a fantastic moment to, to, to get a Brox. Um, but it really did make sense for me to bring in a pincer and tr try to get a Brox. I, that just didn't feel like it was an option here for me. But I do end up going for the Stone Edge. I'm confident enough that I can um, take whatever hits he has for me and kind of deal back a ton of damage here. Um, it is It does have a little bit of ship on it. And... I'm just super curious to see how defensive this Togus is and how much damage, well first of all if I can land a Stone Edge and how much kind of damage I can deal with a potential Stone Edge um, and that's going to tell me I, I think a lot about how his team is built. Um, I do a very decent amount of damage here, obviously not enough to KO but close to it right? Not far from it. I um. And it did feel like an opportunity lost. Maybe I should have brought a, a more offensive set, maybe a life orb set, maybe um extra belt or something else but it did kind of feel like it, like an opportunity missed but i can't really be upset about that damage it means i'm gonna have to land another stone edge though in a row because it didn't feel like i i could go for overheat in this moment because i really needed that overheat for um for the vicar vault in particular especially just to deny webs if for no other reason so here uh the sogaleo comes in and um the Sogaleo is banded. I found that out after the match, but uh, I kind of have to hope that I can deal with whatever kind of offensive Sogaleo I, he can come out with. Now, the fact that he brought it in here did make me think that it might have been some kind of defensive one, but um, obviously he knew that he could take a Stone Edge. He, he knew that he could um, come back with something else, but here I was able to take the banded Sunsteel Strike with relative ease. Um... I don't think it was that bad of a roll for me, uh, given how well that I that I ended up taking it, and I'm able to just land a Pressure's Blades. Thankfully, I'm not missing these Pressure's Blades or these Stone Edges, which is fantastic for me so far. But it does allow me to um, just straight up Oko the, the Sogaleo. So already my Groudon is kind of here to slay the opposing Ubers, and if that's all it does, and and if all it does is kind of simplify the kind of board here and and make it easier for my lower tier mons to maneuver around then i will be very very happy with with how uh groudon kind of works out here but now obviously brings in the hydragon which is not ideal and i'm trying to figure out um if i'm if i'm in a position to kind of switch around or because obviously the groudon is fantastic um death water for for later on in the match but more importantly um, if I can maneuver a situation where I can bait in the Vicar Vault, I still have a, a, an overheat, and that feels so much more valuable if I can deny Sticky Webs than HP on my Blastoise, as unfortunate as it is, because I kind of do need the, do need this Blastoise as a backup check to the uh, Galarian Darmanitan. But again, uh, the Mew is the primary check. Hopefully, um, I can deal with it through an offensive check, but... If need be, Blastoise um, was going to be my backup, but now it's looking less and less likely as it's just taking damage switch switching into um, certain hits that I don't switch well that particularly well into. But I'm going to go for, for the flip turn regardless because um, I did do run some counts and, I, and this thing I confirmed was no boosting item. Or no, I, I think it showed leftovers if I, if I remember correctly. But, or no, it, it, it hasn't revealed an item yet because it hasn't taken damage yet. I believe he will reveal leftovers um, at the end of this turn. But what I did find out was that it was no boosting item, so I assumed that it was scarfed for the time being, and it get, and it allowed me to flip turn out into uh, this guy, and now he reveals that it is leftovers, and I can kind of um, play around whatever he wants to do here because I know that uh, again close combat just does a lot to his team. I believe I said this um, uh, in the live battle, but. Basically, close combat just hits most of his team for very, very decent damage. And here, um, he stays around. I, I assume that he thought that I was defensive enough to to take a hit, but I but no, this is just scarfed and more than offensive enough to, to kind of deal with whatever wanted to come in here. And but it's going to put me in a really awkward position because uh, 
having this pincer out here with the Togekiss in the back, with the uh, Vigavolt in the back, does put me a little bit out of position. But it was kind of necessary, obviously, in order to kind of not just lose to Hydreigon on the spot, right? So, out comes the Vigavolt. And, and I'm thinking through a lot here, right? But my main thought here is that I don't want to give this thing a free turn. And if I attack this thing just for a little bit of damage... Oh, and, and I was also running Calx. And um, the Calx weren't looking too unfavorable. I think, I, I think at the very least, if I could take down a huge chunk of HP in exchange for, for webs. I think I'm okay as long as my Rotom can, can maneuver itself in, but seeing just how little damage that did, just obviously very on the spot, just revealed uh, that this thing is pretty much max defensive and immediately th those calcs that I was looking at were not very favorable a a anymore and in retrospect, it does feel somewhat silly to, to kind of... Um, give up my pincer for this little damage onto a Vigavolt, but at the same time, um, it also felt silly to kind of switch something in when he could Volt Switch out, he can get a free switch, he can get all the initiative that he wants, and uh, I really felt out of position, and I really didn't feel like I have kind of the tools to stop it, but this will mean that I never get rocks up for the remainder of the match. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to be the biggest deal in the world, but it does allow me to Bring in one one of my boots mons, and uh, and you can see I'm deciding between one of my two boots mons, and I'm trying to figure out what would put more pressure on him. I decided to go out into the Arcanine, and uh, he can see that my Arcanine is boots from the fact that I um, don't get affected by the sticky webs. And I believe I'm thinking through a couple options here, but ultimately I try to, I, I guess I play this a, a little bit risky, assuming that he wants to switch out into something, and I go for the teleport. Um, in particular, I'm kind of concerned about the potential Togekiss wanting to come in. Um, the Golduck is, is an issue, obviously, but he goes for the Thunderbolt, which genuinely really confused me in the moment. Um, it didn't make a whole ton of sense to me in, in the moment because um, at the range he was at, with the, I, I was just talking about how silly it, it was to, to waste turns getting that damage off with the Pinsir, but that damage put him... In, perfectly in range of a flamethrower. I could have just flamethrower KO'd and this Vigil would have been out of the way completely, which, um, which again, it makes more sense to me that he would want to keep his Vigil Volt, especially when I did still have that, that, um, this Rotom fan in the back, which, which is off the ground and is going to be able to probably defog, right? You, you can kind of assume that this Rotom fan is here to, to defog. So, Again, it, it just confused me in the moment why he would um, be willing to throw away his Vicavolt so much. And then I believe... I, oh, no. Okay, so so this play threw me off so much. That, that Thunderbolt play threw me off so much. That I felt like, honestly, my best play was the Volt Switch back into my Arcanine. To kind of threaten this Vicavolt out again. Or at the very least, um, use that turn to Morning Sun up and try to make something happen there. But he clicks Roost. Which, again, which is not great. So... When I initially brought in this Arcanine, my thinking was that I was going to get Volt Switched on as I came in, and I was, I I believe I was just kind of working out in my mind um, whether or not like it, it was worth risking a crit because I, obviously it looks like I took two Thunderbolts, so I'd, I'd be able to take whatever hit he wanted to hit me with fine, but it would leave me so low that I, I was worried about putting that me out of, out of position, especially and, and and especially just risking my Arcanine unnecessarily. But, um, the fact that he went for Roost made me feel like I could freely go for, for Morning Sun, but now it puts me in a really awkward position because this Arcanine is not, um, offensive enough. It, it, it's not that offensive, and it looks like I could reasonably take out, uh, a, an offensive Togekiss with Flamethrower, but I don't, I, I don't think I was sure at the time how defensive this Togekiss could be, and it was defensive enough that it takes that Flamethrower, and it pretty much nullifies the turn because he's able to roost up. And that really didn't feel great in that moment, right? And again, this entire sequence of events where I'm kind of um, giving up my ground here and giving up a lot of um, a lot of really valuable board positioning is all because of that play where he stays in and clicks Thunderbolt when I, want, when I thought he would switch out and I click Teleport here. But um, I am able to bring in my run fan... Uh, and another thing 
that was really important for me to notice in team preview was that he has no he, he didn't bring his diggersby so he has no um he has nothing to stop a volt switch and volt switch um and, and he has a number of mons that are weak to volt switch and he does bring it bring in the vicavolt which is is interesting i think he expected me to roost um because last time my my, my random fan was in i played this really aggressively and i and, and i think i didn't take a turn to to defog and i just clicked volt switch to to play this um sequence as, as aggressively as possible but here was a, i was in a position where i felt like i i couldn't kind of mess around with this with webs on the field anymore and i had to kind of um i kind of had to play this more safely and now here was a really interesting moment where i got a crit on the volt switch which is, is a, which is super interesting because I think um, it definitely matters in as much as it puts this Vicavolt in range of a flamethrower from my Arcanine. I think maybe it was out of range before or, or would have been a really ugly roll, but with that crit damage from that Volt Switch, it definitely puts this thing in range and, I, and I'm able to definitely threaten this thing with a flamethrower, which is why I made another play assuming that he would want to make a switch and go for the toxic instead even though objectively this, this is a bad play if he does anything uh if, if he stays in and clicks any attack right but I was confident enough that he would want to go into the tokus especially after he got a chance to see how little damage uh my tokus or, or my flamethrower was able to do to the tokus I was confident enough that he would want to switch out that I'd go for the for the poison there and Thankfully, this token case is on somewhat of a timer, and I can kind of try to maneuver around. I can I can play my I can play my Rotom a little bit more ag aggressively. Try to put myself in positions to defog, to, in positions to Volt Switch. He goes for the Air Slash, and I'm confident enough that I take that I'm going to take that Bind. And I believe I go for a super aggressive Volt Switch on this play, which uh, is probably not ideal, but I believe that's what I do. Yeah, in hindsight. 100% of the time, I probably just take the opportunity to defog, um, but I did pick up the KO, which felt important to me at the time. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't know because I, I don't know what I was thinking the Tokus would do, because I believe all the Tokus had revealed at the time was what Air Slash and Roost, I believe. So I don't even know that I was too too scared of the Tokus. I, I just wanted to, to get it off the board for for whatever reason. But if I played a slower game and gone for the defog, I think that ultimately just helps me out in the longer run 100% of the time, right? So here we are, and uh, I get in my Blastoise, right? I feel reasonably confident that no matter what, um, this Blastoise can kind of do whatever it needs to do. But he brings in the, the Darmanitan, which really confused me in the moment. Like, I did not understand this play even a little bit. Um... But I understand that, but I, I kind of understood that it just deals a lot of damage to my team. I thought maybe he wanted to force some initiative with, with a U-turn. Maybe he wanted to see how I would see how defensive my Blastoise was. Maybe he just assumed that I was a specially defensive Blastoise, seeing that I always switch it in on, on special attacks. So here I'm really, really thinking, right? Because I can body press this thing and I can do a lot of damage, but it's never going to straight up Oko. Or I could flip turn and get myself in a, into a moderately better matchup here. I decide on the flip turn, and he goes for the belly drum, which really again just threw me off. When, um, it didn't enti again, it just didn't entirely make a whole ton of sense to me, because um, I would have been free to click body press, and with the belly drum damage. Body press is a KO 100% of the time, and then after the Darmanitan goes down, I just don't think he has enough offense, and I think I'm in somewhat of an unlosable position um, with my with my board presence and w and with everything that I have in in the back. But instead, he like I said, he just yolo's it, goes for the belly drum. Obviously, he takes the flip turn fine, and I bring in the Mew. I, okay, so honestly, I, I bring in the Mew, forgetting about. The sticky webs, which is honestly for the best, because even if I didn't forget about the sticky webs, I would have forgotten. Or, or maybe this is just something that I didn't know at the time. But um, Zenmo Darmanitan gets a significant boost in speed, which I did not account for. Um, just assuming that this thing would be um, Gorilla Tactics 100% of the time. Regardless, now I'm in a position where uh, I have to start, you know, sacking things off, and I'm thinking that you know maybe this isn't completely over. 
maybe I can orchestrate a, a, a board position where I can get a bunch of intimidates off with my with my Arcanine and I can make it out of here, you know somehow taking down this this Star Manitan. So step one is I give up my Blastoise. Uh, he reveals the Ice Punch, which was really scary. And and there that goes. Um, which allows me to get in my first Intimidate off with my Arcanine. And then and then uh, I have to start thinking about, you know, what order I, I want to sack in because it, it does matter in terms of what I want to be able to keep in the back for when I can finally, you know, maybe think about how to deal with everything that's, you know, beyond this Darmanitan, right? And and if, if I'm in a position where I can keep any pieces and I don't have to just, you know, sack my team off to, to this Darmanitan, right? So, uh, next step is I have to give up my my Rotom, and in all in, in all honesty, I'm still you know reasonably you know distraught over the fact that I had the opportunity in my hand to to take to take um to take the Darmanitan, body press it after the after the belly drum. And it's KO'd. It just can't do anything. Um, and now this two-minute thing comes up, and this is where you know I start kind of wondering how we're gonna be able to do this in case you know this match doesn't end or anything happens here. Um, but at the same time, I'm also just preoccupied with thinking through how I'm gonna be able to do this. And I do reveal here that I am Yachi Berry, um, which was you know just funny in the moment, but it doesn't. And that doesn't matter at all. So obviously my plan here was if this was a scarfed gorilla tactics Darmanitan, then if I'm reasonably healthy and I and I take an and I sickle crash, um I, I can eat it with the Yachi Berry and then Precipice, Precipice Blades in return. It's a one for one trade essentially. And um I feel like I'm I'm in a decent position for for the rest of the team. But here I finally get a Marikonite and here's where I have to attack. The fire punch goes off and you can tell I needed every intimidate off. That I got. Uh, I'm able to click flamethrower. Darmanitan goes down. And now it's just uh, Arcanine and Mew against Golduck and Golduck and uh, the Vicable in the back, right? Obviously, this Golduck is, is going to be faster. It's going to have to land um, Hydro Pumps. And here's the thing, right? So, um, uh, honestly, my team doesn't deal with the Golduck well, right? The Golduck really kind of went through tore through my team but 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 um i put this gold duck in a much more difficult position if i if i um if i body pressed on that belly drum turn because i'm I'm, I'm forcing, in, in, instead of the Darmanitan taking out all those mons, I'm forcing the Golduck to do it. And if the Golduck has to do it, then it has to land Hydro Pumps over and over and over again. And it's and I'm putting it in a, more, in a much more awkward position. But uh, that is going to be the end of the match timer. But uh, we will be going into a... But we will be going into a little bonus recreation where um, we do some things. I let him get sticky webs up. We kind of talked it over before the match, and his Vigavolt was at around 65-ish percent HP. So obviously, my Mew has to be able to take out the Gold Duck, and it, and as long as it brings down the Vigavolt under you know thir to 35 percent ish, then um, that will end up being a win for us. But uh, a lot has to happen here in order to make that happen, obviously, right? Um, and my main argument here was, look, it always kind of comes down to, to Hydro Pump lands. Because if you miss any Hydro Pumps and you let my, my Mew get up any additional Dragon Dances, then I am in a really interesting position to kind of take this match from there. So we just kind of wanted to play it out. I... I it took a little bit of convincing, but but I talked him into playing this match out and kind of seeing where where this took us because, again, I did think there was a legitimate opportunity for my Mew 
to kind of take this match home if we were given the opportunity beyond the timer. So we do go back in, in a recreation. We'll get, get to that in just a second. But here it is. Okay, so we did actually come back just to see um, if my view could actually pull something off. Now, uh, a lot's going to happen, right? Because we did talk, and I believe his gold duck is Specs. Now, if I am able to get up multiple Dragon Dances off of a Hydro Pump miss, then we very, very potentially win here. Um, or he just lands everything, and I very, very much lose. But if we do have a miss here on the Hydro Pump, this will mean two Dragon Dances, which does mean that I have a chance to not only KO this gold duck, but also a uh, KO the incoming Vic Now, the Vic is very, very defensive, so I'm going to have to do a lot here. Uh, honestly, the best case scenario would be a second missed uh, Hydro Pump because that would mean that uh, that would mean that I get three Dragon Dances up, and I believe at three Dragon Dances, <gasps> he missed another one. That's three Dragon Dances, dude. That is a third Dragon Dance. And I just have to see something. So at plus two, Mew against a Specs Golduck. Let me see at plus three. Oh, that one's rough, dude. That one's rough, dude, but I think I have to go for another Dragon Dance, right? Am I wrong about that? I think I can just... I am a plus two. I think I... No, I have to take the plus two. I think I have to, right? Because he does about 60% to me. Oh, I might regret this, but I think I get enough back with the, dr with the Drain Punch that the third Dragon Dance matters here, right? Potentially? Or am I just... I, I could I could have just thrown... I don't know. If I if I call this wrong, then I call this wrong. But at plus three, even if he hits me with a Hydro Pump, then I get 35% of my HP back. And between Leftovers and the HP that I get back, I very potentially take another one. And I could have just thrown. I definitely could have just thrown. Although Earthquake should pick up a KO. Plus three Earthquake is not... It doesn't have the best chances to KO. But... I might just have to go for that anyway, right? Uh, because I should get back 35% off of this. I should get back 30%. And 30% here is 54 HP. 70 plus 54 is 124. And a Specs Hydro Pump, if I'm at 124 HP, is a 50-50% chance. Which is honestly better than my chances of KOing with, with um, with earthquakes. So I think I just click drain punch here, and if everything happens the way that I expect it to, that's actually a really high roll. So let's see where my HP goes. It goes up to 133, which is fantastic for me. I think it. I avoid another one. Wow, 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 wow. I am blown away. But now I'm definitely out of range of another of another hit, and I think that should seal it up. Um, now it really depends because Vicavolt could actually bring this back. Let me just see here. Vicavolt is max defense. I believe he told me that. So if I make this thing not modest and just super duper defensive, um. I don't think I take a bug buzz ever, right? But I am a plus three. And it actually looks like I don't KO here. Which is brutal, but it looks like it's the case. It actually looks like I don't KO here. Um... But I guess we just click the button. I guess we just see whatever happens. Um, this is my best chance to deal damage here, and that's not a lot of damage. I believe I need about like five hits potentially. But do I take a hit? Ugh, I have to take a hit. I have to take a hit. Oh, we just barely take a hit. 
We just barely take a hit. I could miss another one. Um, now, uh, one thing that we did um, talk over a little bit was that his Vicar Vault was at around 65% HP. So I believe if I, if I can just bring this down to around 35%, then that should be a win every which way. But I also have to hit. I do hit. And I just have to hit, I believe, maybe three times here. And that should be it. Now, picking up a KO here would be dope. But yeah, it, I don't think this should matter. I think he'll agree with me that bringing it down that low is exactly what um, I needed to happen. But last Mon Mew uh, does what it needs to do, I believe. So I believe we're going to talk this over a little bit more. And I believe, um, I believe the conclusion is that I will pick up that win, even though uh, I did technically lose to lose twice in a row. But like I said, I just wanted to kind of play out these last couple turns, see what have happened. I definitely needed all three of those dragon dances, and I needed all three of those hydro pump misses. There's a lot that happened here, right? Because again, there was that non-body press on that Darmanitan, which would have KO'd, and that one play with that Arcanine in front of that Vicavolt, Vault, where I could have just clicked Flamethrower and KO'd, but I didn't, and it ended up spreading or spreading around much more damage than I needed it to. And that Vicavolt, Vault, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't there in that end game, then I had a much much easier time uh, just kind of doing what I needed to do. But ultimately, I guess that's how this matchup ends. That's uh, going to be it for week one of the ICBA. Uh, there's going to be a lot more to come. I mean, hopefully I uh, this Groudon, I think this Groudon is going to open up a lot of interesting things for me to be able to do with it. But I'm blown away. I mean, just the fact that we had to do this on the 20 minute timer, we could have potentially, this could have potentially been one match if, if, if that weren't the case. But uh I don't know. I'm, I'm just blown away. I'm kind of speechless. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.